Rocket League might be the single hardest game to master from scratch. And if you try to learn it on your own, like I did, you can waste hundreds, if not thousands of hours and still not be SSL. <laughs> so today I'm covering 40 things I've learned you should never do in Rocket League if you want to rank up. For those of you new to the channel, welcome. My name's Luke. I'm a peak GC3 player with over 6K combined hours coaching, but I'm mainly known for running Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside the program, we take gold through champs just like you up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. And as of the time I'm recording this, we sold out all 100 seats for upcoming March launch. But since we've still got 14 days before launch, I'm doing a last call one week extension for any last people that want in before we close our doors until May. DM me with the keyword close and we can talk details about how to get you in in time. My Discord will be first linked down below. Other Otherwise, let's get into it. Okay, jumping into the actual tips and things you should never do. Number one, spamming quick chats. As tempting as it is to mash your wow keybind after your teammate throws the open net, don't do it. All spamming quick chats does is encourage your teammate to throw. So avoid the wow quick chats and keep it to sorry and my bad. Number two, flipping from a standstill. When players are panicking and trying to recover, I see a lot of people try to flip when their car is stationary. The reason this is bad though, is because while you're flipping, you can't actually drive and accelerate. So if you flip from a standstill, you'll actually reach supersonic way slower than if you drove and then flipped. Unless you're dodging a demo or something, never flip from a standstill. Number three, half flipping back to your corner boost after kickoff in twos. It's almost always better to be the team starting with the ball, even if you have less boost, then be the team defending with 100. So regardless of the kickoff spawn you get in twos, always cheat up on your kickoff. Number four, playing with default camera settings or keybinds. Most people know that the default camera settings in Rocket League suck, but a lot of people don't realize the default keybinds also suck. Watch one of my camera settings videos and one of my keybinds videos, especially if you're a newer player. This is something that you need to fix first thing when you start playing ranked. Number five, landing without holding power slide. Whenever you're going from being airborne to grounded, if your car is even slightly turned to one side or the other, you're gonna lose speed on your landing. So to counteract this, you should literally always hold power slide when you land. Whether you're transitioning from the wall to the ground or air to the ground, just make it a habit of holding power slide. And not only will your recoveries be so much smoother, but you're going to maintain momentum and play way faster. Number six, flipping all over the field. A lot of people think the more you flip, the faster you're playing, but that's just not true. The thing you've got to understand is that every time you flip around the field, your car is going to be stuck in that animation. Not only that, but you can't change direction during this whole time. I would go as far as to say you should almost never flip around the field unless you're covering long distances. So stop flipping, stay grounded, and believe it or not, you will play twice as fast. Number seven, overfilling boost. Oftentimes, I'll see players with 50 or 60 boost completely leave the play to go get a big boost when it's completely not necessary. If your tank is already half or three quarters full, you can pick up small pads to max it out and stay closer to the play. Never leave the play to go get 12 boost from a big boost when you could just go pick up a pad. Number eight, flipping into every challenge. A lot of low rank players think that every time they have to hit the ball, they have to be flipping into it. And especially in a lot of corner situations, flipping is actually the worst thing you can do. For example, when you're in your opponent's corner, you want to be very cautious about committing because if you flip and land on their back wall, the entire field behind you is going to be open for a breakaway. Bottom line, you don't need to flip into every challenge, especially if it's going to commit you upfield and it's not going to help you win the 50-50. Number nine, fast aerialing when you could save your flip. I think once people learn how to fast aerial, they get really excited and they want to do it all the time. But the truth is, unless you're racing somebody to a ball midair, you probably shouldn't fast aerial. Whenever you can jump and save your flip and still hit the ball, you almost always want to because jumping and saving your flip will allow you to course correct at the last second and add additional power to your shot over a fast aerial. Number 10, going for kickoffs from the right spawn. I couldn't tell you why this is a thing, but if you're new to Rocket League, left always goes. I don't make the rules here. Number 11, wall camp or cherry pick. 
After you go for the ball as first man, you may find yourself pushed upfield on the wall or in front of your teammates. When your teammate gets the ball in these situations, it can be very tempting to sit upfield, kind of expecting them to pass it to you on the wall. But this is where I'll just tell you from experience, they're not going to pass it. Just rotate back around, get behind your teammate. You'll thank yourself later. Number 12, only learning the flashy stuff. The reason you're probably stuck is not because you don't know the flashy stuff. It's because your fundamentals are shaky at best. I'm thinking movement mechanics, recovery mechanics, things like kickoffs, shooting. These are the things that are going to come up most in your games. And so, yeah, training flashy stuff can be fun. But if you want to rank up faster, hit the fundamentals too. Number 13, coaching your teammates. Look, if you're in a ranked game, you're at the same rank for a reason. Do not be the guy pretending in quick chat that they're normally higher ranked and definitely don't try to give feedback to your teammates mid game unless you're trying to get them to throw. Number 14, killing your momentum. This mainly happens when you're rotating back post or maybe waiting for a center on offense. But if possible, you almost never want to be sitting still in a position. If it turns out that you get somewhere and the play is still kind of developing, use the extra time to pick up small pads. That way, when you do decide to go for the ball, you don't have to accelerate from zero and use boost to do so. Number 15 defending from inside your net. Sure, sometimes you'll be on defense for a while and you'll have no option but to be stuck in your net. But if you have time, you should never drive into your net and defend from there intentionally. The reason being is because when you save the ball from inside your net, not only are you more likely going to recenter it if you do save it, but it's almost impossible to protect any shot put on your backboard. So stick to defending back post, aka the post opposite ball side, and be able to clear the ball with momentum to your corner if a shot comes. Number 16, driving in reverse. Basically, the only time I ever drive in reverse is if I'm recovering awkward and I have to drive in reverse to land. Otherwise, if you ever find yourself driving in reverse for anything more than a second or two, just half flip. There's no good reason to be driving backwards because if you ever do want to change your momentum and drive forwards, you're gonna have to waste a ton of boost to do it. Number 17, voting to forfeit. Trust me, if you're in a platinum, diamond, or even champ lobby, you can come back from being three goals down. Let your teammate be the one voting to forfeit. Number 18, only ball chasing in free play. If you watch pros train, you'll notice most of them really just chase the ball in free play. But the thing you've got to remember is if you're looking to improve, you're not the pros. There are a lot better things to do for intermediate or even advanced players than just chase the ball in free play. I actually just dropped a video last week where I covered my top five free play drills to improve, and I've got a lot of positive feedback on that. So if you're struggling with what you should actually do, definitely go check that video out. I'll have it linked on screen. But yeah, don't just ball chase in free play. Number 19 only doing free play. Once again, if you want to improve nowadays, there are much better methods out there than just doing free play. If you're trying to climb now, you have access to stuff that pros five years ago never did. So make sure you're using workshop maps, training packs, Bacchus mod plugins, controller shortcuts, and I have top lists of all my favorite training packs posted over in my free discord. If you didn't know, I actually run Rocket League's largest free improvement discord. We've got almost 40,000 members and there are tons of free training resources linked in there. So if you haven't yet, you should definitely join. Once again, it's completely free and you can leave whenever you want. Number 20, avoiding 1v1s. Especially if you're a twos player, once you get to champ or GC, the best way to improve in twos is by playing ones. 1v1 will teach you skills that other game modes just won't. And if you're somebody who's watching right now that doesn't know what they need to do to improve, cue some ones. You'll realize how much you suck and uh, it'll humble you pretty quick. Number 21, driving back to net in a 1v1 situation. Yes, rotating back post is usually what you should do, but if you find yourself in a 1v1 situation, you actually don't want to move back to net. The reason being is because if you play your net in a 1v1, you allow the opponent tons of space to set up a shot and get close to you before they shoot. What's much better is if you're in a 1v1, you want to close the gap and start shadowing your opponent's movements. That way, if they mess up their dribble, you could scoop up the ball for free and you just apply way more pressure, which might make them mess up their shot. Number 22, giving up possession or always booming the ball away. At the low ranks, you can win by simply 
clearing the ball hard and booming it every time you get it. As you start to climb up through diamond and champ though, the worst thing you can do when you get the ball and nobody's pressuring you is to send it downfield. You've got to understand that at the high ranks, possession is everything. And a good player would rather have control of the ball on their side of the field than not have control of the ball downfield. So as you rank up, learn how to dribble the ball, carry it, bounce dribble, and hold possession. This is what will get you from diamond and champ up to GC and beyond. Number 23, shooting every time you get the ball. This mistake mainly happens when you get the ball at, let's say, midfield, and your opponents aren't pressuring you and are instead just playing their goal line. As tempting as it may be, you've got to resist the urge to shoot from halfway across the pitch. The best way to make more of your shots score is to simply shoot from closer to the net. So avoid that urge and don't just bang the ball every time you get it. Number 24, playing passive with teammates behind. If you find yourself in a situation where your teammates are behind you and the opponents are dribbling up the field, you do not want to let them dribble the ball without applying some form of pressure. I'm not saying that you have to full send and challenge them every time, but if you have teammates behind, you cannot wait back and jam up rotation. Instead, drive challenge or just force them to go for a shot, flick, or do something. That way your teammate behind has an easier chance of saving it and you're not just stacking and covering the same thing as your team. Number 25, changing your controller settings or car preset or topper or anything like that without a reason. I get it. When you're slumping, it's nice to blame it on your settings or your car design. But if you want to rank up, stop changing your settings. Number 26, tilt or rage queuing. Once you start tilting, you have already lost the rank session. So if you feel tilt coming on, get out of ranked and into free play. Number 27, grinding mechanics or ranked for four hours straight. There comes a point in a session where yes, you're playing the game, but really you're not learning anything. For me, I cannot play ranked well for anything more than 90 minutes. My brain just shuts off. More is not necessarily better. So if you're gonna play for four hours, I won't stop you, but maybe split it up and try not to grind for four hours straight. Number 28, only training offensive mechanics. If I had to give one piece of advice to my Twitch chat, it would be this. So many players will spend hundreds of hours trying to learn how to score better when you could be winning your games if you just stopped getting scored on. I know offensive mechanics are more fun to train, but even if you put half as much time into training backward saves and backboard play and things like that, you will rank up three times as fast as everybody else at your rank. Number 29, wave dashing around the field for no reason. I know wave dashing looks flashy, but specifically wave dashing on and off the ground almost never has a benefit. Sure, there are certain situations where you want to delay that speed boost. Maybe you're waiting on a boost pad to respawn or you're waiting for a play to develop. Fair, but the amount of people I see at the low ranks just jumping and wave dashing around the field for no reason is too high. You have to remember, every time you jump up to wave dash, once again, you're stuck midair. So if the ball changes directions, you can't react. Number 30, solo queuing. Okay, it's not that you should never solo queue, but if your goal is to rank up faster, especially at the lower ranks, the easiest way to do it is to just find a teammate. You'll instantly eliminate half of your double commits and the game just becomes so much more enjoyable to play. Once again, if you're struggling to find teammates, definitely hit up the Discord because we got tons of people all across the ranks constantly queuing in there. But yeah, if you want a free boost, stop solo queuing, go party with someone. Number 31, front flipping on your kickoffs. If you're still somebody who front flips on their kickoffs or doesn't flip at all on their kickoffs, this is the first thing you need to fix. I'm not saying you have to speed flip on all of your kickoffs, but at the very least, you should be using a diagonal dodge. If you don't know how or why this is so important, I'll have a link to one of my two minute tutorials. I made like a kickoff tutorial a week ago on exactly this. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet. Number 32, tunnel visioning. The most common place I see this happening is when you're pushing up on offense and a ball gets centered very high in the air. In these situations, because the ball's high in the air, it's very easy to tunnel vision and just see the ball on the field. The thing you've got to understand though, is that whenever you're staring up in the sky, your opponents and honestly, your solo queue teammates are probably doing the same thing. The higher a ball is, the more cautious you have to be about jumping for it. Because if you fly up without checking if somebody else is going, you can throw yourself out of the play for the next 20 seconds. Number 33, 
rotating back the same way you entered. Whenever you're finishing your play on the ball, you almost never want to do a 180 and drive back to your side of the field the same way you entered. Reason being is because when you rotate in straight lines like this, you risk colliding with your team. And in general, you're just going to find yourself stuck under the ball and in worse positions much more often. Instead, when you finish your play, make it a habit of rotating off the ball across the field in a circle motion rather than a straight line. This will allow you to collect boost, look for demos, and overall just put you in a much better position behind your teammate so that they can rotate in and make a play much easier. Number 34, going for dribbles and flicks every time. Sure, dribbles and flicks work great if somebody's shadowing you and you want to be able to quickly react and flick it over their head. But if nobody's pressuring you or you have space, flicks are usually not the best way to go. Especially if the opponents are just playing goalie, bounce dribbles and shots are going to work way better. Or if you're really good at dribbles and flicks, that's fine. Just mix them up with fakes, low 50s, and other stuff like that. If you mix it up, you'll score way more. Number 35, pre-jumping. This one goes without saying. Number 36, not being subbed to the channel. Okay, no, we, we won't count that. Uh, actually, number 36 will be aerialing for balls that you could drive to. Even if your goal is eventually to aerial, you should always stay grounded for as long as possible. There's no benefit to taking off early and aerialing across the field other than the fact that it will burn more boost and commit you to the play sooner. So stay grounded for as long as possible. Number 37, demo chasing. You should almost never go out of your way to look for demos and almost always just try to pick them up while you're moving across the midfield or rotating anyways. Sure, if you're pushing up in a 2v1 and the opponent and yourself are on the same side of the field, you can kind of set up a demo and set up a screen. But even if you have a 2v1, don't chase your opponent down if they're on the opposite side of the field to try to demo them. It's going to be way too hard to track them down and it'll just commit too many people on your team to this one play. Number 38, leaving your team. This is obviously true on defense, right? You don't want to be grabbing their corner boost while your team's getting scored on. But the place that most people don't think about this is actually on offense. Too many times I will see players completely leave their team who's trying to center the ball to them to go all the way back and pick up their own corner boost. Never ever leave your teammates in a 3v2 like that unless you are absolutely not going to be needed in the play for a good amount of time. Stick with your team and you'll win way more. Number 39, dropping the ball on zero seconds. Under no circumstances are you allowed to let the ball hit the ground on zero seconds, even if it's a one goal game. Once again, I don't make the rules. I'm just saying, if you want to rank up, don't mess with this. Keep the ball up. And number 40, finally, the worst thing you should never do in Rocket League is go into Twitch chat and tell people how mechanical you are. Sweet, that should cover it. Subscribe for more Rocket League tips or join the Discord if you want more free stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. <laughs>